Previously on Pioneer One. Alexi? He's here? So you do know him. The capsule was sending its telemetry data. The Russians have requested the return of their man, and we intend to turn him over. Unacceptable. McClellan doesn't want that to happen. He's ending the quarantine early. He's dying. What does it matter now? I want to stay with you. I think you're going to have to decide what you believe. Tomorrow morning, we're going to hold a press conference. We're going to lay out everything we know and let the world decide for themselves. Tomorrow, everything changes. Good afternoon. Thank you for waiting, but I'm sure you all understand why it was necessary in light of the incident this morning. <clears throat> My name is Thomas J. Taylor, and I'm the director of the Helena Montana Field Office for United States Homeland Security. For the last two weeks, I have been tasked with investigating the circumstances surrounding the satellite that crashed in Edmonton. Through the course of our investigation, it has become clear that this was no ordinary satellite, nor was its crash an accident. It was... It was a piece of space hardware left over from the Soviet space program. It had been commandeered by a terrorist organization whose identity and motives I'm not at liberty to disclose at this time. The secrecy and deliberate misinformation surrounding these events were errors in judgment on my part and have caused unnecessary confusion and panic for both the American and Canadian people. That I apologize. Further, improper supervision and inadequate security measures allowed the suspect to take their own life earlier this morning. I alone take full responsibility. I have failed to live up to the level of performance and responsibility with which I have been charged. In light of my conduct, I can no longer, in good conscience, continue my duties, and I'm resigning from my position as director of the Helena office, effective immediately.
What happened? He's gone. They took the boy. The explosion was the diversion to divert us from the main target. Who took him? From the way they fought hand to hand, I'd say they were Russian. I thought you said you had the perimeter secured. The fight broke out in a group of protesters about the same time. They drew my men away. Was anyone hurt? The president's called a meeting of the Security Council. Well, you tell him to wake his ass up and get him on the phone, you hear me? Calgary's gone dark. Anything from the Russian embassy? Russians. This wasn't some nut who strapped a bomb to his chest. This was surgical. Air traffic control in Alaska reported that a 747 broadcasting a civilian code veered off its flight path at 0, 2.30 hours. For oh, God's sake. So 2.30 this morning, failing to respond to radio before crossing into the Canadian border. Why am I hearing about this for the first time now, huh? Things are getting missed. Oh, damn it. Did you get any on When I say now, I mean 10 minutes ago. The civilians are in lockdown. What? Everyone, your attention. This has just been made a Canadian operation. The Canadians grounded their air traffic yet? I think the Prime Minister just gave the order. You think? Line one. Yes, sir. You do realize we have about 100 reporters about to descend on this place. I know. What do you want to do? Vernon can stall. Shouldn't we cancel? Well, we can't just tell him to forget about it and go home. I think the circumstances have changed, don't you? We have something. It's identified as Korean Airlines Flight 7. Headed towards the Les Conestres, yes, sir. Korean Airlines? Yes, sir. What the hell is going on here? Flight 007. No response to calls from air traffic control. The guys were looking for got away in a chopper, he said. They did. This is a diversion. It's a mess up there. They won't get all their planes on the ground for another hour, and that's optimistic. Uh, sir, I have air traffic control. control. One through. voice at a time, please. Can you hold, please? They're saying Canadian fighters are scrambling now. Before they cross into Alaska? The plane is still refusing to heed to. We have CF-18s moving in to intercept. And what then? We're gonna fire a warning shot. No response. Is there any other way to force it to land besides... You're gonna have to shoot it down. The Canadians don't down the plane. They're through. crossing into American airspace now. Sir, I don't think we have any choice now. How many people fit on the 747? The target's over Alaska. Our fighters are moving out. Why? They don't have authorization to enter American airspace. There are F-18s moving in to intercept. We'll be in firing range any moment now. Korean Airlines? Flight 7? Yes, sir. Doesn't sound right. Mr. President, shoot down that plane. First responders are moving in on the ground. Thank you. Jesus. I thought you said civilians were in lockdown. They are. How do you suppose the Russians knew what they were looking for? Your guess is as good as mine. Yeah, I've got a pretty good one. I just heard what happened. Chertov, where is he? How should I know? Tom! Get your hands off me. The girl's dead. What? Jane, Yuri's nurse. She's dead. She was with Yuri when they took him, shot her in the head. They were Russian. How do you suppose they knew where to find him, huh? You think Alexei... You tell me. Do you know where he is, Doctor? I haven't seen him since last night, but I don't I don't think... care what you think. Get him out of here, now! Find the Russian scientist and lock him up. Sir. Thank you, Mr. President. Somebody give me a glass of water. It was the only option, sir. I don't need coddling. The Security Council was meeting. We're going back to DC? I'm going to Calgary to clean this up personally. 
You'll go back and act on my behalf at the NSC. I'm not getting shut out from this. They're going to be OK with you sending a subordinate? If there's a problem, you can tell them they can shoot down my plane. And keep trying the Russian embassy. Get somebody in a room. How much leeway do I have? Put the screws to them. Shrapnel injuries and smoke inhalation, but they'll be fine. What about the capsule? There's nothing left. Chertov? And no sign of the two bodies I left on the deck. They must have been extracted before they got out. Very tidy. These guys are in and out in less than 10 minutes. These were professionals. She was my responsibility, too. Is there anything I should be doing, sir? No, you're fine. There's still no word on any survivors from the 747 shot down early this morning by American F-18 jet fighters. Can you tell us if there's any link between the 747 and the bombing this morning? Firstly, firstly, we're not referring to this as a bombing. This country has now been the victim of not one, but possibly three terror attacks. The president's campaign for re-election may not recover from today's events. At this time, it's not clear that the explosion this morning was a terror attack. But we can agree that something did explode. Though I understand there will be more clarification on that at the press conference now scheduled for this afternoon in Calgary. For now, we're setting them up in the mess hall. Good. All in one place. You can lock the doors and set the room on fire. Not funny. It's a gallows humor kind of day. Just promise me you won't dodge this one. My credibility is already shot to hell. I'm not promising anyone anything. You want a bone to throw? How's this? Mr. Secretary, I'm Agent Sophie Larson. Sit down. I'm going to be doing most of the talking. I prefer to stand if it's all the same. Fine. Whatever. I almost killed a lot of people today. The kid wasn't on that plane. Nobody was on that plane. It's still a mess out there, but so far no human remains or luggage. It was a decoy. Obviously. But it was the flight number. Korean Airlines Flight 7. September 1, 1983. Suppose you're too young to remember. A 747 on its way from New York to Seoul accidentally strayed into Soviet airspace and was shut down by Russian MiGs. No survivors. 62 Americans on that plane. That was Korean Airlines Flight 7. Someone's idea of a joke, evidently. So, you've managed to lose your suspect, allowed all the evidence to be destroyed, and now we have three separate acts of terrorism to explain to the public. What are the Russians saying? Nothing. The guys that came here were mercenaries. The Russian government doesn't know, or they outsourced the job. Either way, they've got deniability that's plausible enough. There's only one choice, then. Which is? Go to the public with what we have. And what is it we have? The truth. What truth? That you were holding a Soviet love child from Mars? Do you actually believe that? With all due respect, it's not up to you or to me to decide what the truth is. You're goddamn right it isn't. You know what really gets me, though? I bet you think you're the good guy in this. You failed in your duty, spectacularly. 
Every step of the way, you've been combative, irresponsible, and less than honest. Now you have a dead civilian on that conscience of yours. You think you were doing the right thing? For what? An orphan from outer space? And where is he now, huh? You screwed this up. You screwed me, and you screwed your country. That's on you. Right now, we have a problem here. And I need your help fixing it. How? I saw a bunch of reporters downstairs. You're going to get in front of them and do a mea culpa. You're going to say that your mismanagement and lack of judgment allowed a terrorist suspect to blow himself up in one final blaze of glory. You are going to apologize to the American and Canadian people for putting their lives in danger. And then you are going to resign your position, pending further charges. The precise language is up to you, but uh, that's the gist. And if I refuse? Then I will see to it that the full force of the United States government comes crashing down on your head. You and everyone who works for you. You didn't answer before. Do you really think that kid's from Mars? I do. Well, good luck proving that now. You're second. What's her name again? Agent Larson. Larson. She's good. You're saying you had no knowledge of this? That is what I have said. Say it again. I will not be spoken to in such a manner. Understand, sir, what we're talking about here would be considered an act of war. I know exactly what you are talking about. The position of the Russian government has not changed. What reason would we have to invade your territory? To get back your man. What man? You tell us you are holding no one. Has your position changed? Now you listen to me. We know this was a Russian operation, and we are prepared to respond accordingly. There is no official action taken by my government. Believe what you like. Have you ever heard the name White Wolf, Mr. Ambassador? White Wolf. Private security company, I believe. We have reason to believe that White Wolf may have been involved in these events. Now, if you are willing to acknowledge that possibility, we may have some room to maneuver. We cannot be held responsible for activities of private organization, Russian or no, as you should very well know, Mr. Collins. Very convenient, outsourcing your government's dirty work to wealthy oligarchs like Viktor Klemenko. Viktor Klemenko is a fool with too much money. He is product of American-style capitalism. People like him are running your country. Ridiculous. We're willing to consider, for the moment, that your government had no knowledge of this. But if there's an organization operating within your borders that perpetrated an act of terror on this country, then it must be dealt with. If you are unwilling or unable to do so, then we will be forced to take action. I was not aware that you have authority to speak for your country on matters of international diplomacy. You should not concern yourself with such things. Mr. Ambassador, when someone in your country threatens my country, it is my concern. Whatever has begun here, first stone was thrown by you. Hi folks, uh, sorry to keep you waiting. We will be getting started shortly, uh, in about 30 minutes. 
Uh, so about 4 p.m. Uh, 4 p.m. Mountain Time. You know, I've given this a lot of thought. Jesus, Tom. Sorry. What have you given a lot of thought? I don't think we should do a sitcom. I was thinking a variety show. I could tell jokes. You could sing. We could get Vernon to do that stupid dance that he does. Yeah, except your jokes aren't that funny. Really? McClellan seems to think so. What do you say? About what you'd expect. What are you going to do? It's not really a choice. There's always a choice. Not this time. I just wanted to... You're uh, not trying to ask me out right now, are you? You were right. Should have listened. That girl probably wouldn't be dead if I had. No, she wouldn't. Is that what you wanted to say? I wanted to try to explain why I made Tom. Um, you've got people waiting for you out there. I'll see you out there. See you out there. At which time, you took it upon yourself to bring in a civilian expert, one Zachary Walzer in, to consult for you? Yes, that's correct. Excuse me, madam. Zachary Walzer, a Mars expert. Correct. And why did you do this? At the time, I thought it prudent to pursue every line of inquiry, including exploring the validity of the Mars story. And you stand by that action? I do. And you maintain that you acted properly in delaying the transfer of the suspect? I do, yes. What motivated you to do that? I felt that turning him over as a terror suspect would prevent us from fully investigating his claims before he succumbed to his injuries. So you took it upon yourself to continue the investigation in the field? Yes. Precedent set by the Extraterrestrial Exposure Act of 1969. Does it occur to you that your actions may provoke an international incident? Suspects' frail bones suggest the development in a low gravity environment. The capsule contained fossilized evidence of primitive life. At some point in the 1980s, the Soviet Union launched a manned mission to Mars. A mission that they didn't announce to the public. Yuri, as we came to call him, was the child of two cosmonauts sent on that mission. And where are these cosmonauts now? Still on Mars, I assume? I can't say for certain. Of course you can't. I, I think we've heard enough. Mr. Taylor, as you well know, your actions indirectly caused the death of a Canadian citizen, a civilian. Yes. Knowing what you know now, do you regret any of the decisions that you've made? Everything I did I did because I thought it was the right thing to do at the time. And I would do it all again, even knowing the consequences. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. This committee is now ready to render judgment. It's clear to me that you made some very serious lapses in judgment during your handling of the Calgary affair. But it is the opinion of this committee that those mistakes were not crimes. Since you've already resigned your position, no further action against you is necessary. That concludes these proceedings. You have any idea how many favors I had to call in to keep you out of the stockade? 
You're buying breakfast. Miss, could you get me a knife that cuts, please? Thank you. I asked Susan to marry me. Don't see a ring. You notice that, huh? Was that uh, before or after Calgary? During. That's why you broke the quarantine. That was stupid. I'm in no position to argue. Sounds like the act of a desperate man. Maybe. All I can say is at the time, it seemed like the most ordinary thing I could do. I can't really explain better than that. Well, maybe what you saw up there got you to thinking that the uh, impossible might just be possible. I saw something bigger than me. Something bigger than this. All this. I think I saw a kid that grew up on Mars. You realize uh, that sounds crazy to most normal people. I do. But you believe it. I believe in the possibility, and that's why I had to do something. I was the only one that could protect that kid. I needed to know for certain. Sounds like something Sam would have done. He was smarter than me, you know? I remember one time he said to me, Frank, he said, do you know what we're fighting here? The communists, I said. No, he said. It's bigger than that. We're fighting despair. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> I think he would have been proud of you. I'm going to go out on a limb. You asking what's a name to marry you? Uh, sorry about that, by the way. But, but I don't know if that's what you really wanted. You, you wanted something to make sense, because you were confronted by something that didn't, which is part of the reason why you were the perfect man for this job. You, you entertain possibilities that the others won't. Now that, that's what makes you important. That's what makes you worth saving. Even if sometimes it leads you to make stupid ass mistakes now and again. If you say so. I'll give yourself some credit. Your instincts weren't all wrong. The whole idea that the Soviets stranded some people on Mars, it is entirely impossible, you know. It has just the right ring of desperation to be true. I took the opportunity to uh, poke around, flex my considerable muscle in certain intelligence circles, see if there was anything to find. And? Almost nothing. A name. Why? You got beat up over this, but it doesn't mean you were wrong. But you made an enemy out of McClellan. It's not good. He's a player. The country needs people like McClellan. But it also needs people like you. You've stumbled onto something here, and if you see it all the way through, it may just be the most important thing you'll ever do. So, you want what I got?
Don't worry, Adelie. What are you doing here, sir? You can drop the sir. I'm not your boss anymore. Okay. What are you doing here? I need to talk to him. Well, I don't think he has any desire to see you. It's important. Yeah, I'm sure it is, but uh, I don't want to be the one to tell him that. You have that. something you want to say to me? Then say it. You put her in that situation. I know. She trusted you. We all trusted you. You want to make sure she didn't die for nothing? Then help me. Where is he? Like a... Doctor? I have nothing to say to you. I think you'll want to hear what I have to say. Can I come in? You like whiskey? I spoke with a colleague of mine at Cornell a couple months ago. He said he'd check for high levels of deuterium in the person's blood. He'd tell you if they'd been drinking the water. Never occurred to me. If we'd checked Yuri's blood, we would have found what we were looking for. Is that her? Who? Oh. Yeah, that's her. What'd she think of your work? She was fine with it, until she wasn't. She said I was obsessed. People like us don't get to have wives. People like us? People like us can't be happy unless we feel like we're doing something important. Something that matters. Or maybe it's just an excuse to avoid confronting your real problems. Ever think about that? What are you actually doing here? I told your people everything I know during the debriefing. They're not my people anymore. Tough break. You ever hear from your Russian friend? No. I've lost a lot of sleep over that one. You were just doing what you thought was right at the time. But it doesn't excuse it. There's a lot we don't know about that day. What if I told you I might know how to find Yuri? I sincerely doubt they were able to get him out of that base alive. You sure about that? You have something? A name. Who? Someone from the Ukraine. Someone who may have been involved with the Soviet mission. Come with me. To the Ukraine? Are you insane? That's the prevailing opinion these days. Taylor. We've had our difficulties, but uh, I can't do this without your help. I need your knowledge. And frankly, you're the only one that knows what's at stake here. And the only idiot dumb enough to actually go with you? You're serious. What do you think this guy knows? Is he for real? Let's find out. When I first saw that kid, when I saw this evidence that people had already been to Mars, I felt Depressed. Strange, right? You'd think I'd be elated. I thought I'd be. I figured it was just a matter of time that just hadn't really sunken in yet, but I always thought that when we went to Mars, we'd go together in peace. 
that it was a place we'd go with the noblest of intentions. A bold new start for humanity. But this, this was all so messy and awful. I realized that it was foolish to think that we could do anything without bringing our baggage along. And I was sad about that. I wondered, for the first time, would I even want to go? Would you? Of course. Then come with me. I can't. I have things. I have baggage. Do you really think we can find him? I don't know, but I have to try. Okay, but there's a condition. Don't ever lay a hand on me again. I must be out of my mind. events that are pivot points in history. There are moments when we have to make hard choices. Those choices have consequences. Some moments change the world. This was one of those moments.